The Necromancer Apprentice is the boss fight where he... The boss himself doesn't really have much going on, but the thing is he summons another skeleton every single turn and keeps pushing himself further back. It's been a while. This is a good time to bring people like Miller in with their anti-undead attacks. Of smite. Zealous Accusation. That's not actually one of the anti-undead skills. Uh, Holy Lance won't really be useful because he won't, he won't be fighting with him in a, in a back rank, probably. A slight heal isn't negligible. We'll probably just be wailing on the people in front. Do I have a second Crusader in this party? I don't think I do, do I? No, it's just Miller. Last stream, someone was like... Someone mentioned Miller and I forgot who Miller was. I feel bad because, of course... Miller's named after Jesse Miller, which is one of my biggest one of my biggest supporters on Patreon. But at the moment, I was thinking of Miller Saint, another person that used to comment a lot. I don't think is actually around much anymore. But uh, that name was the first thing that came to mind. And I'm like, I didn't name a character after Miller Saint in this playthrough. His damn repeating names throwing me off. All right, so the skeletons. That means, uh, as a general rule, bleeds aren't going to get a lot done. Let's see, your rake gets more and more powerful every time you use it, right? That takes out the front two rows. The Abomination could actually be really handy in this situation for wiping out all the skeletons that's being summoned by the, the uh, Necromancer while also maybe even attacking the Necromancer at the same time. That kind of nasty AoE on the boss. What's your disease? Rabies? That's actually not too bad. Okay. We may go with Abomination. Those of Faith have no tolerance. Whoa, what? You can't... You can't have an Abomination and a Crusader in the same party. Okay. That messes with that plan a bit. Do I want to go with someone like Zach Hadron then? Just someone that just... Just... Slams away at people in the front row. And also is tanky. Just some... Oops. Just having some basic tanks to just wail away at the uh, front row of enemies could be handy. And the less damage they can take, the better off I am trying to heal them with Bogdanius, so that they hopefully, won't, they hopefully won't be going down so fast that I get in trouble from that. Probably want to use a ranged character besides that. Shadow Scythe. Let's see, Shadow Scythe can't attack the front row, which is kind of problematic. So I do kind of want to be able to uh, take out the skeleton so that we're just fighting the Necromancer as fast as possible. But having a ranged character like uh, Vanilla or Shadow Scythe could be useful just for Putting a shot on the on the boss every round, no matter what, that should be equally valid. Ooh, I wonder what kind of me I kind of I kind of wonder what kind of mess we could get in with the. Uh I wonder what, what kind of mess we could get in with the uh, the the corpses now. I've never fought this boss since there was corpses, and if we end up with if we end up with corpses, that could actually be a mess for me. Meanwhile, you can attack. A lot of ranks, not all of them. Throne Dagger's pretty strong. I don't think I have any anti-undead anti people left in the party, right? Because there's no Vestals I can recruit. So it pretty much comes down to which ranged character I want to use between Shadow Scythe, Vanilla, and Dark Gona. Let's see, let's see if anyone has a nice bonus against undead. Warren's Phobe. Ruins are undead. Parano That's not great. Those aren't great traits. Ooh, bonus damage in the Ruins. You win, Dargona. You get to come along. There we go. So, we need to upgrade some skills here, especially your nice little dagger attacks and so on. Oh yeah, we have a lot of money right now. It's not too bad. I can't upgrade right now, right? Yeah. Let's get our skill upgrades in there. Stunning blow. Smite for 25 bonus damage against undead. Zealous accusation is just an AoE. It's handy if the front undead is about to die and I want to attack the person that's next in line, basically. Bulwark of Fate. Inspiring Cry for a, ba a battle heal is nice, but, I'd ra but he's going to be important for just attacking in general. I think the current skills are what I want to go with. Go ahead and just pump those up real quick. Zach Hadron. Poor little level one. Really makes a difference on the uh, skills available, huh? So all I can do is, is level up other skills I haven't been using on that character. Bogdanius gets a better heal. Higher chance of bleeding, unfortunately, but it's still a better heal. 
What do I have equipped right now? Vulnerability, Damon, and a, a artillery, like usual. All right. You should be all set up here. Let's check everyone's equipment. Pimp them out right before we get them all murdered, right? All right. Ooh. Oh, right. I only... <laughs> so I, have an un I have uneven upgrades. I need to get up to that uh, 26 deeds to upgrade my weapons. Well, Lucas qualifies for the next armor, at least. Miller, I mean. I, why <laughs> I got distracted by the... I don't know why I started thinking I was looking at Lucas. There we go. That'll keep these characters a bit more alive. See if we can make this work. Okay. What could be handy with Holy Lance? No. I was thinking Holy Lance could be useful for attacking the Necromancer multiple times at the beginning of the fight with a strong bonus attack, but at the end of the day, he, even if I start the fight in the back rank, he's not going to stay there for the, in the long term. Huh. I think I'm ready just to go with this party. Ooh, Jester item. Death Glow Resist. Virtue Chance. Bonus stre uh, Reduce Stress at Blow Torch. Just an all-around feel-good Jester item. Alright, Dargona. You're already equipped. Miller. Oops, that's not my inventory. Miller needs some items. Bonus Prot. Bounty Hunter items. Hit points. Speed. Bonus to stun chance. Possibly. Ooh. Bonus damage on all melee skills. That's reasonable. Bonus dodge at high torch is also pretty reasonable. That would help keep the character... That, that would help us avoid the character take, get, taking hits in general. How do you do? You dodge is garbage. If I, if I pump up the Crusader's dodge, though, then we don't have to worry about healing them in general. Ooh, bonus to heal skills and heal received. Does this thing have, does this thing have a downside? Bonus to heal skills, uh, bonus to heals received. Increased resolve experience, which is not something I'm super excited about, but whatever. Um, stun resist. Oh yeah, you're more likely to be stressed, stunned, and debuffed, but the heals get slightly stronger. I don't know if I want to be making people level up faster right now. Gonna quick look around here. Blight, a lot of blight skills. Dodge. Damage versus unholy. There we go. That'll be a scary item. Put that on you. Is the leper equipped already? Let's give the leper the... Yeah, bonus to heals received will keep them alive more easily. And then this will keep their dodge up. Let's see. Anything else is here? Bleed skills. Don't know if there's something specific I want to throw on a leper right now. Accuracy, crit, but bonus stress damage. I think for survivability's sake, we can make these characters really tanky and not have to heal them very often if they with the uh, extra dodge chance when the, in, in high light. That'll be 20 dodge. Making the two characters relatively hard to hit while already being tanky, and that'll make it that'll make us less reliant on Bogdanius's often questionable uh, rolls for heals. Let's see. Yeah, chat. I get that. I could I could uh, chain duelist advance and uh, lance together to keep switching places between the highwayman and the crusader over and over again. The problem I have with that is that I want to avoid getting overwhelmed by the skeletons. So I'd rather wipe them out rather than let him keep summoning them over and over again. I, I'm gonna go with that approach this playthrough. Be it ideal or not. Let's go ahead and just get set up here. Don't make any tragic mistakes with what I'm bringing into the run. Should be good for here. Um, if we bring holy water, we can help with stress. A few other things can help with prots. I may want to get equipped just for that stuff. Yeah. We'll bring a few around to help out. 
it's so goddamn expensive to bring all these things along, of course. Ah. It's a boss run. If we do it right, we'll get a lot of money out of it. Mastery over life and death was chief among my early pursuits. I began in humility, but my ambition was limitless. Who could have divined the prophetic import of something as unremarkable as a twitch in the leg of a dead rat? A devil walks these halls. Only the mad or the desperate go in search of him. Wow. The, it looks like the map came pre-scouted. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The, the map just immediately have a bunch of details on it the moment I load in. Well, the furthest away location is right over here, which is one, two, three, four, five rooms away. Conceivably, it could also be this one that's also five rooms away, technically. But, uh, about that, yeah. Don't normally see that happen, but it'll be a relatively short run to the boss, which will make it, this a bit safer. Hello, trap man. Let's just get to that boss and be safe. Books! Do you just touch books, right? Let's try books. Nope. Nope. With or without fire, you're still not in a great having a great time with the goddamn books. I need to stop reading just forever. Video games and movies for life. All my reading I do in the comic books, because I'm an intellectual. Hey friends. Doing good? Hope so. Oh wait, no. Should single target this nasty guy in the back. There you go. Can I just recruit like seven grave robbers? I don't need other classes, do I? I could just I could just run with this one class forever. It's fine. That is what inevitably happens in every playthrough of Darkest Dungeon for me, is that I see these 20 different classes and I'm like, oh wow, I could do with all these different classes. And then before long, I only really want to recruit like four of them, and I don't really want to deal with half the other ones. Here's where Zealous Accusation comes in handy, because you can attack, you can finish off one guy while still working on the other guy. That was a shockingly high roll. Hey you. Stop it. People have gotten mad at me for saying hey you, which I found really amusing. Surges as the enemy crumbles. I get. I guess I must have spent an entire episode of The Witness Where saying "Hey, you!" to every puzzle that I encountered. Pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Welcome to the fun, fun territory of what happens when you're doing constant stream of consciousness commentary for like several hours a day. <laughs> That's how you get to repeated acts of me fighting enemies in Dark Souls and saying, "Hey, buddy, you want a party?" Which is a thing that I haven't said in a long time, but man, that used to just come out. And the funny thing about little quirks like that is that the more you point out... Oh, motherfucker. That is a... Okay, we're, if we deal with that, we're dealing with it after the boss fight. I'm not doing that, dealing with a Shambler pre-boss fight. Hello, you? Valuables remain. Yay, my inventory is full. Fuck me. Don't touch it. I was really worried someone was going to freak out and just touch it for funsies. The funny thing about doing stream of consciousness commentary is that uh, if someone points out a weird quirk in your commentary and says to say it less, that actually just makes you say it more because you're thinking about it and thinking about not saying it, which just makes just makes you say it. <laughs> so it's actually counterproductive to point it out. <laughs> hey, no, stop! None of that. Ah. And if you want to talk about repetitive commentary. Playing turn-based games like this, or games like Zesteria, where you do basically identical combat scenarios over and over again for 50 episodes. You run out of things to say. Oh man, my, uh, my darkest my not, not my darkest dungeon, my, my Dungeon Guardians playthrough was just, at some point I just had no words left to say. It's like, no, this is just the word I said before, but I mean, what else am I going to say, right? Oh, was that a minimum roll? I think that was a minimum roll. Hey, you guys. Chop, chop. No crits today. I think if either of them crit, it would have been down. But, you know, that's how luck works. Take him out. At least we got that. This Gravedigger's favorite number is eight. There we go. Oh, man. Well, 
As expected, I'm already full on inventory. Let's see here. Wait. Oh my god, I didn't give you a second. <laughs> oh no! Oh no. Well, I mean, you can hold it at least, but yeah, you should have had an item. I missed one. That's tragic. Uh, I'll get rid of the herbs for now, I guess. Hey, little look lockbox. No, it's trapped. Should have opened that with someone that could deal with traps. Yeah, I, yeah, Chad, a lot of people do, uh... A lot of people are bummed out that I don't do two witness videos every day right now. But, uh, at the same time, that's... It's quite the output to keep up. And, uh... I was constantly at risk of not having uh, episodes of Witness on a, on a regular basis because I was consistently putting out basically everything I had to the point where I was gonna, just gonna like, the more the, the more you have double videos per day of any series, the more likely that that series will just suddenly stop having videos for a few days if something goes wrong with my schedule. If I was if I was going to really cynically do the smartest thing for my channel at all times, then yeah, whenever if a, if a thing like Witness takes off like it does. I would just make witness videos all day, every day, until I finish the game to capitalize on, on its popularity and just cancel every other series, either temporarily or indefinitely, which is what a lot of channels do. And a lot of those channels do better than I do. But uh, a lot of people that watch my channel like the fact that I finish everything. So I keep- so I try to finish everything. And it gets crazy. I mean, everyone I know cancels shows. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like most of their shows. It's kind of it's kind of insane actually. Dear lord, these guys just stomp through the entire enemy party. Success so clearly in view. We're going to have to do more crusader more crusader leper runs. They complement each other really nicely. There we go. So we know that now we know where the boss fight is, which is very think very handy. Do I even have a reason to camp? Let's check first. Do I have skills? Resistances? I want to see if I have actual skills that are useful when I camp. Because right now... Reduce stress damage, I guess? Right now, no one's hurt. So unless I have a buff, there's no reason to, str to actually camp right now. Bonus- Oh, bonus damage for one combat. That's worthwhile, and I might as well- I, I, could, I could prevent the, uh... I could at least prevent the, uh, that little bit. The, uh, ambush. Huddled together. Furtive and vulnerable. Rats in a maze. Oh, you shut up about the incomplete playthrough of, uh, Pillars of Eternity. I have, like, the best track record on the face of the planet as far as that shit goes. <laughs> There's gonna be weird exceptions, but you know what? Pillars of Eternity broke me a little bit. It was getting really complicated and open, and I couldn't tell where to go, and I accidentally progressed the story f slightly too far, so that it was uh, making high-level encounters ha happen everywhere that I wasn't ready for, and my party was poorly balanced, and I had a shitty ranger for a protagonist that seemed useless, and, like, it was not... It was not going great, and no one was watching it. And it wasn't until the moment I cancelled that suddenly everyone cares that it's gone. Which is a bummer. Because I'm like, where were these guys before? That would have been nice. Let's avoid that nighttime ambush. And then someone else could help with the stress to counteract that, which more or less uses all our time. There we go. So we should be good to go. In radiance, may we find all right. Victory. So that was all. Uh, that was all a ruse just to get some bonus damage on one of my characters. Basically, it's fine. It'll help me out. There we go. Uh-oh. Is that the sparkle of coin, I see? Better than trap. That is true. If only you hadn't just casually jumped into it. Granted, I would have picked it up anyway, so... I guess it's not that invalid. Walk up to this door, torch inevitably goes down, pop it back up. We're above light, which gives us bonus dodge on our leper. We should make this fight easier. Come on. Who's your big nasty? Nightmare made material.
All right, we're just gonna make a big old mess of this guy. So you can only attack the, the this guy, this person's gonna be on attack the boss every turn duty. Mainly because ranged characters usually can't attack the front row, so I'm just gonna accept that. Ooh, a hex. No one needs healing right now. Yep, that'll make you easier to hit. But first, let's wipe out your little summon. Yeah. There we go. Oh no, the corpses really are a problem. Oh man. That's gonna cause me some problems. I have a 20... That's a 55% chance of stunning him. Hang on. I just stunned the boss. <laughs> ah, ha, ha. Skip your turn. And he only gets one turn, one action per turn, so that's a big deal. He's not one of those double action bosses. Oh, man. This is handy. No one needs a heal still, so keep stacking that up. Even more reduced dodge. Everyone gets free hits now. Smite. That's not a crit. Oh my god, he's just going down. Alright, 30 hit points left. 20 hit points left. Wow, this is the most... So far, this is the most successful run of a boss I've done so far. Oh hey, the other boss went... The corpse went away. Did he... Does summoning a new skeleton to replace the previous corpse or something? That's weird. Um... No one needs heals, because no one... Has no one taken damage yet, basically? This has never happened before. <laughs> uh, make sure the skeleton's easy to hit, I guess. Just to avoid a dodge that messes our flow. But honestly, I'm just going to hit the boss at this point. Makes, it doesn't make sense to let him live. No Alright, well there goes that boss. Will these bones finally hey, friend. <laughs> Holy shit. This expedition at least promises success. Wow, that is the cleanest boss fight and shortest boss fight I've ever done. I almost clicked on that. In the entirety of Darkest Dungeon, I believe. Although, ne to be fair, Necromancer's Apprentice has always been, by a wide margin, I think, the easiest boss in the entire game, I'd say. In, in many, in some ways, the, uh... In some ways, the cannon can be easier if you never let it shoot, but I think that there's enough things to worry about, about whether or not it's going to shoot you. To make that worthwhile. Alright, well, we're nice and healthy, so I guess we'll just go after the Shambler. Oh, man. I'm sure we'll be fine. He was over here, I think. I think the Shambler extinguishes your torch, doesn't he? Then I get a new... What's my new trinket? Bonus to debuff skill chance. Might as well just put that on you, then. Instead of the, the nonsense item I put there. Disease resist, not so much. All right, you need a torch, right? The sacrifice of fire is the gate is the gate to ruin. Place a torch if you crave the void. All right, we never fought a shambler yet. If it goes poorly, I might be able to run away. Please don't surprise. Oh, uh, okay, that's fine. He surprised me in a way that rearranged the two melee characters. That's fine. There we go. Well, just get busy. 77 hit points isn't too bad. What is what? He's Eldritch. I don't have any anti-Eldritch in the party. Well, we'll just hit him really hard. Uh, stun chance. He has 100% resistance. I have 19% above that. So I'd have 1 in 5 chance of success. So I'm just going to hit him a lot instead. There we go. Does he need a... I mean, I can't do anything else. So I might as well just keep trying to make him vulnerable to hits. To avoid any misses for now. Until someone actually needs a heal. Knocked back is totally pointless. Clear corpses. Nope. Just keep hitting them. Not a lot of uh, nuance to these two warriors up front. Death waits for the okay. Lapse in concentration. Now I remember why the Shambler's a pain in the ass. These little n shits that we he summons up here. Although one zealous accusation might take out both of them, which is a sentence that I wasn't really expecting to say today. Maybe I'll get lucky here too. Uh. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, exact no, no amount of damage we needed. These are, the uh, the sycophants apparently don't give you th uh, they apparently don't leave corpses behind. Oh, that's terrible damage. I, I guess I'll attack it directly. Oh, you! How dare you? Okay, not a fan. So they're dodgy, huh? 
Artillery, three to five. That's pretty garbage. Let's just make sure, let's just make sure the next guy hits this guy. There we go. Make everyone easier to hit. Anti-venom. I think I missed my chance to use my anti-venom a second ago. Went a little too fast. Hey, you. Out of here with your nonsense. I don't need no sycophants here. He's just gonna keep doing that. Alright, well... I guess we'll stop at one, then. Yeah, we'll, I'll just kill one, and then he'll slide into melee range. And I'll leave the other one alive, so the other people can melee them. Thrown dagger? Come on. There we go. So if I keep using thrown dagger on the middle one, that'll get the big guy back into melee range for the other characters. It might be time for a little healing, but this guy I probably want to kill as fast as possible, too. Tempted to keep him marked, but I don't think that people have a hit chance problem right now. Is it easy to pull around? Ooh, you, you, can, you can pull him around. Uh, let's stay on top of heals, actually. A proper roll, and no bleed. Cool. Best case scenario, more or less. Now let's put some holes in him. This guy's already done more to my party than the previous boss. I forgot to anti-venom again. Well, we're already getting we're already getting these effects on us faster than we can actually deal with them anyway. All right, did I did anti-venom and, and uh, bandage on the leper? Cool. He summoned one behind him, so now I, now he's I'm free to just wail on him for the rest of the round. So this fight should he should be down before my characters can actually die. If I just stay on top of heals. And thankfully, the leper has a bonus to heals received. That's a terrible roll. Come on, man. There we go. Proper rolls happening. And I inflicted bleed, so... Round that down to a seven. Come on. He'll be down on one hit at this point. It'll pretty thoroughly blow my mind if we somehow lose this fight. <laughs> Alright, taking damage. It would have been beneficial to heat to uh, camp after this at this point, but uh, at this point I could easily just leave. I won't. There's still treasure rooms to go after. But my objective's done. And he's down. Oh god, that's what his corpse looks like. <laughs> I didn't know they'd make him a corpse. I didn't think these things would stay around. Alright. Yeah, the artillery is garbage in this case. It doesn't clear corpses. That clears corpses. That'll help me out here. Wait, that didn't clear the corpses. Does it not clear all corpses? Clear all corpses. There's still a corpse, though. What? Except he condensed from a two corpse to a one corpse. Did I destroy half his corpse? Is that a thing that happens in this game? <laughs> Either way, they're in melee range now. A singular strike. So the problem's solved. It missed, chat. Chat, how do you how do you miss how do you miss clearing corpses? Wow, lunge it doesn't even do damage against this guy. Alright. Just stay in the back then. And chop. Oh, you. Everyone's just doing less damage now, huh? Alright. This should be it, though. We're safe. Hello. Ancestor's Tentacle Idol. But a victory nonetheless. Twenty-five percent virtue chance from just the nastiest little shit of a thing. All right. The match is struck. A blazing star is born. So party's been healthier before, that's for sure. Uh, yes, chat. The eldritch. You do get a bonus uh, damage against eldritch as a. Uh, you get bonus damage against the eldritch as a. Um, what do you call it? as a, an, an occultist, but my occultist doesn't really have damaging moves, really. Like, when I highlighted Abyssal Artillery, it was like, you want to do three damage? I'm like, not really. I'd rather do, like, actual damage. It's like, well, the, na the number we got for you is three. Well, I mean, I guess I'll just buy something else then. And that was that was the exchange I had with the this, this fictional whatever the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> 
All right, now that we're done with boss fights. <laughs> God, what was that earlier topic? I was, I had, I had a topic I was sort of setting aside until I finished that. Oh, no, no, no stress healing. No stress casters, bad. Ah. I want to use artillery to wipe her out, but I should heal the party because two characters are really low. And that's a problem. All right, you need to heal. There we go. Critical heal and a bleed, but that's negligible by comparison. Hey, friends. Ooh, you're an undead. You know what they say about undead, right? They don't. People forget about people after they're gone. Sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, this is working great. Except for this person being alive still, but I'll fix that right now, I hope. There we go. That's the role I went for one of the first time around. Unfortunately, there's an arbalist just hanging out in the back right now. Um, I could clear corpses or try to heal myself. The health problems are a real problem, though. There we go. Sort of neuters the effectiveness of various party members right now, but I'd rather... Eh, stress heals good. It's a bit of a problem not to attack him, but I wanted to deal with the fact that the characters were so low on health. Zealous Accusation. 5 to 10. Might, might take out both corpses. Sure did. Now he's in melee range. I just... I just... I just accosted corpses with a Zealous Accusation. That's a thing that just happened. That's, that's what my life has become. Must heal. Oh, that was just garbage, man. And, and a bleed. Oh, no, the bleed is already there. I'm wrong. Here we go. There we go. Let's make use of all these keys I brought along. They can be beaten. Now we're getting resources. I don't have that actually... I don't have that much reward right now, do I? Besides one really uh, rare trinket. Yeah, I need to make, I need to get some actual haul from this run. Two, two easy boss clears, but ow! Ancient wow! Traps lie How much wait. damage did I take? Eleven from a trap? And for that can happen. Ew, a curio. Don't touch it. I don't remember what to do with those. It might, it might be a holy water thing, but I'm not entirely sure. Torches? I'm all out, aren't I? Alright, well that could be bad. I'm sure we'll be fine. Jesus. Oh, now I remember the earlier topic. I was thinking about the topic of, uh... making more than one video per day of Witness, and, uh... the thing is... Normally, when a show really takes off, there's only one show that's doing really well. So it's like, oh yeah, that's a standout show. I'll make two episodes of Bloodborne for like a month or something like that. What caught me off guard is that Darkest Dungeon Witness and... Something else, maybe? And, oh, and Dragon's Dogma, Darkest Dungeon, and Witness all started doing really well at the same time. And I'm like, I can't... Ideally, I'd make more than one video per day for all of these games. But that's literally impossible. <laughs> I was pretty blown away by the fact that so many games took off simultaneously like that. Makes it way harder to keep up with it at all. Alright, please take out the little... No! I don't want another surround of stress from him. Here he comes. Oh, hey! Averted. Crisis averted. And our heals are actually working today. Partly due to strategically placed bonus healing items scattered around. Die, corpses. <laughs> Working a melee range. <laughs> Not that it matters. I'm really... Maybe it's a high level thing, but I don't get under... I don't understand yet why people complain so much when corpses were added to the game. Unless they were majorly buffed in some crazy, uh, majorly nerfed in some crazy way I haven't seen yet. I don't know why people complain so much about the, uh, corpses. Cause, uh, they don't seem to really make the situation that difficult to me. Maybe those people are not very good. Or maybe I haven't seen the part that makes that hard yet. But I want those crests, so goodbye holy water, sorry. 
But I need I need the crests. Let's see here. Yeah, there's two barriers down there. I'm gonna keep going for a while. We can get more encounter money at least. No touchy? Sweet. I have never failed to disarm trap yet. Besides the times we just walk under one, I mean. Like, so far all of my disarmed traps have been doing great. Which is, it's basically a free stress heal, which is fantastic for the, uh, for our grave digger. I'm just not playing with books anymore. I don't trust them anymore. The darkness holds dominion. So now this just became a dark run. So we have a lot of stress to worry about. Increasing the chance that this party will ultimately have to be treated afterwards. Oops. Wasn't in a hallway yet. But I want to get more treasure. Although this is somewhat problematic of an approach because I could spend... Uh, can I just click on you? I totally can. Cool. I didn't know I could do that. This increases the chance of, uh... Of stressing people out, but at the same time, I need I need loot. Not even just money, but just getting a lot of, uh... Insignias to upgrade my facilities. So everything I can get, everything I can get is good. 10% damage. I don't want to scrap that. There's one barrier there. I could run around it, I guess instead and pick up this portrait I don't want to put my my food away because we could we're, we're very likely to to starve again on the way there I think I'm gonna dump the uh, shovels because we've already pre scouted the north part right yeah all right goodbye shovels I'll finish the hallway because people freak out if you go backwards there's that there's that uh, hunger I was talking about Hey, bad guys. Nice to meet you. Oh, there's two stress people in the back. Not what I want to see. And now I don't see it, because it's gone. Funny how that works. Artillery, 5 to 7 is pretty garbage. Some crit chance. But I think I'd rather just keep topping off our party. There we go. Now you're just being rude, frankly. Alright, Zealous, what's my chances here? 6 to 11. That's a... It's more than likely to to work, but... What's a guarantee to work, pretty much, is just to hit them both once. There we go. Just give the Leper their turn. Zach Hadrian wants to play. Here we go. Wow, yep, every single party member taken out in one hit. Complete success. Foolish horrors. Brought low and uh, bust, medicinal herbs. Let's see. Ah, uh, I want the bust. Mixed feelings on what to get rid of, though. Do I, Everyone has a trinket equipped already, right? We can't take any off. Bonus debuff chance versus bonus damage. I might scrap that. I need I need my space. Yeah, these are both good trinkets. Those are both good trinkets. I'm quite happy with those ones. I may swap the d damage for the debuff stone. The damage stone should come in handy in a lot of situations. The debuff's more situational. Although bu disease resist. Uh, no, I'll get rid of Disease Charm. For the sake of some busts. Yeah, we don't, have, we don't have room for that. This should make somebody feel refreshed, right? Holy Fountain. Right. That wasn't a stress heal. That was gems. That's some expensive-ass gems to put inside of a fountain. Okay. Well. People are, people are hurting a little bit. So that's 500 each. But these are already 500 each and we have three of them. God damn it. <laughs> God damn you nearly full in inventory. Do I drop keys at this point? Do I risk the food situation? It may be time just to run, just to give up and leave at this point. Yeah. 
There's two fights over there. I could try to farm for some resources, but at this point, I think I just need to leave. My inventory is getting too full for, for it to really matter anymore. Alright, we're up to 10,000 gold. Bonus from just that run alone, and... Wow, those heirlooms just keep going. Okay. I do realize these kind of inflate your sense of how much money you're getting, because... It's reselling things you brought with you into the run. Alright. So, new Jester item. Bonus to Deathblow Resist on self. Reduce stress damage at low torch, and, and uh... At the cost of a reduced virtue chance. So it's basically just a better stress management thing for specifically the Jester on themselves, but no one else. Kind of surprised it's not something that gives you like like a bonus to stress heals that you give to people. All right, now Dargon is too high of a level to do with these low level runs. That's kind of a bummer, but it was gonna happen. Bonus scouting in the wield. All right. The plume and the pistol. A bidding end to my folly and a curse upon us all. All right, bunch of level twos and threes now. Crookshank successfully removed on off guard and the Ulf, Ulf lost the runs. That's decent already. I'm realizing I, I should have uh, taken Jordan to get their tetanus cleared while that, was, that, while that run was ongoing. Alright, our level 3 party is much more usable now. So we're up to 7 characters, only Crookshank really has too much stress. Is that the person that I just treated? Oh, they were at the... They were having a quirk removed, right? So it, it, that didn't have to do with the, the uh, stress. So we still need to manage that. 